Hey there guys, um, back for a demonstration video today. I'm basically going to show how to connect the DDJ XP1 controller to the CDJ2000 Nexus 2 uh, deck um, and then utilise both decks basically. Um, just purely by themselves basically, there's no laptop or anything involved. But yeah, basically, um, so you're going to literally obviously your, my USB is in on um, deck 2 uh, via USB and a link to this deck through Ethernet. So you plug it in, it'll fire up, and then I will play, I'll play some music, but it'll be quiet ish, so you can get the idea. But basically, um, how it works is that you can't utilize both pads, both set of pads, unfortunately, for both decks. It won't work like that way. You've got to, you only get one set you can use, even though they're both lit up. So yeah, I'm going to start off the track now and I'll start to demonstrate it. But now we've got it playing. So yeah, to use both decks, deck one, you've got to hold in the shift key and make sure that the INT, internal, I guess that's what it means. I don't, I don't know I don't know what that means. But yeah, you got to make sure it's not um, like orange. So make sure it's orange, not orange. And you've got three types of uh, ways of controlling your deck. You've got hot queuing. So you can just literally throw some hot cues, as you see, and then you can also use your pad effects, not existent, there's no such thing as pad effects, straight from this unit to that deck, you need to actually use record box through laptop um, to utilise that feature, but instead what it does is it allows you to use your looping features, um, I think it's a quarter beat, half beat, one beat, two beat, four beat, eight beat, sixteen beat, and thirty-two beat. And then you also got your beat jumping. So that's all the pads that'll be lit up that you can utilise. Uh, I think you can jump up to thirty-two or sixty-four. I, I can't think right now. But yeah, you can jump your beats like that. Jump one back and whack one back in. And you can also jump back, as you see. See, as you can see, you can do your beat jumping quite really with relative ease with this unit. Makes it a lot more easier to trigger it off anyway than utilizing like this feature in the deck, this section of the deck. It's a lot more easier and much more efficient. Um, now, I'll start off this other track. I haven't got my headphones connected, so yeah, I'll have to find a beat. So now that one's whacked in on the first beat, obviously I'm going to use the waveform to try and kind of get it in right. So now they're both in. Work this one back out, and then I'm on the third, de uh, second deck now. So yeah, I'm on the uh, second deck now. Um, to initialise second deck, you have to press the shift in, and press that button again. You'll be on the other, you'll be on the other deck now. So you won't be controlling this first deck anymore. You're controlling the second deck. So that's how you're going to change it. As I said, this this section here you can't use unless you connected it to a laptop or a computer via Recklebox software, um, which will fully open up that unit to allow you to use your slide effects uh, with up to three um, programmed effects in. You can also change it through Recklebox, that's, that's the whole point of the laptop being with there. But yeah, um, you also open up Sampler as well, isn't it? But yeah. See, now I'm controlling the second deck with the hot cues, and it'll remember even it will, as soon as you press it, it will program it in on your deck, as you see. As you see, yeah. So it just opens up possibilities of more free flowing with your performance, really. It helps a lot. Um, but anyway, yeah, 
as you said, you've literally got that same function as you've got from your first deck to your second deck now with that portion of the unit. As I said, to change over, holding shift, one deck, the first deck, you've got to make sure the internal light ain't on. And for your second deck, internal off. And it's the same thing, same principle for deck two and four. I've got these programmed as one and three because I wanted the channels to be separate while I'm mixing. But anyway, that is basically how you utilize the DDJ XP1 and the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2 together. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you like this demonstration of how it all works with just the uh, units on their own. Um, I'm looking into buying a DJM mixer with a USB to allow me to fully open up the means of the DDJ XP1. But until then, that's how I'm gonna be um, uh, doing my new mixes and stuff with, with this unit once I've had a play around and got used to it more. Anyway, hope you have a good week, uh, the rest of it, what's left. And uh, see you again soon for another video. Um, I should be doing that unboxing, hopefully at the start of the month, uh, next month, February, for the unboxing for the uh, for the um, the professional DJ Pioneer stand, which will give it the height I need over my mixer, more more to me more. So for now, that's how I'm utilising it. Um, but I'm going to buy that um, that when it comes back in stock on online. It's out of stock at the minute. It, it went out of stock really quickly because I was trying to buy the unit and that stand together, but I couldn't do that. But anyway, guys, all the best. See you again soon.